Hi, we're talking about ischemic heart disease, epidemiology, risk factors, uh, diagnosis, and treatment. This is a problem that affects up to uh, a third of all Americans. Up to a third of all Americans will die from it, rather. And uh, ab about half of all American men and around a third of all American women will be affected by ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease. One of the most important reasons to talk about this is because it is a disease that is modifiable by uh, lifestyle and uh, also by medical treatment. So if, if we are able to manage the disease, we can greatly decrease morbidity and mortality. So not to point, poke fun at, uh, at the American uh, smoking a cigarette, eating French fries, and drinking alcohol. But uh, this is uh, a lot of the risk factors are, are shown in this picture here. Diabetes is probably the most important risk factor. And as we know, it's not completely preventable, but uh, in some cases it can be. And it is certainly treatable, though studies did not show necessarily that tight glu glucose control uh, is will reduce risk of coronary artery disease, but it certainly won't hurt it, so it's not a bad idea. So smoking is a big ris risk factor. Hypertension, which we're pretty good at treating. Hypercholesterolemia, which we also have some, some good drugs and some uh, good uh, methods to treat. Family history, obviously we can't choose that, nor our age or our gender, though many people do try. So the major variations of coronary artery disease include stable angina, which is caused by atherosclerosis, narrowing of the arteries, and causing insufficient blood supply. So this is when, when uh, you are at rest, usually you're not going to have any problems with this, but once the heart is exercised, then it's not going to have enough blood to uh, keep up with the higher output. Unstable angina and end stemming, people consider this to be uh, kind of on a, on a spectrum. It's caused by transient clotting of uh, atherosclerotic vessels. And in, in unstable angina without uh, and STEMI, we have a transient clot that uh, goes away before any damage to the heart muscle is uh, sustained. Prince uh, metals, sorry, I spelled this wrong. Prince metals angina is a, a fairly rare condition uh, uh, caused by coronary artery vasospasm. It's probably not going to uh, be something that you see all the time. And then, of course, you have a ST elevation MI, which is uh, usually the more serious, and uh, it uh, causes death of, of heart muscle. So in, in diagnosis, history is very important here. If you have angina on exertion, uh, relieve with rest and nitroglycerin, then we're probably talking about stable angina. If uh, if you're having angina at rest, then it's probably a more unstable condition, or it could be a, an end STEMI and uh, possibly Prince Metal. If it's not relieved by rest uh, and it's accompanied by diaphoresis, nausea and vomiting, and uh, dys dyspnea, then, uh, then usually we're thinking of a ST elevation in MI. So on EKG, if we do have a, a STEMI, then uh, we'll see uh, ST elevation. Prince middle angina can also cause ST elevation, but it's usually transient and it's not associated with a Q wave. So uh, that's something that you can recheck. Also, we're not going to be seeing any uh, elevation of uh, cardiac enzymes, which we'll talk about in a second. 
So Q waves are associated with STEMIs. ST depression and T wave inversion are uh, usually associated with uh, NSTEMIs or uh, stable or unstable angina. So an angiography is uh, kind of the gold standard for confirming the diagnosis of coronary artery disease. And uh, you want to get the cardiac enzymes like tr CKMB and troponin uh, to rule out MI. Now CKMB and troponins are, are fairly similar in their diagnostic value, but troponins last a, a little longer, up to a week. So uh, whereas a CKMB, you only have about 48 hours to detect it. So how do we treat angina? Well, if we have acute angina, uh, sublingual nitroglycerin can uh, help relieve the angina. And uh, you can take up to three doses at three to five minute intervals. If, uh, if that's not working, then um, you might want to move to some of the uh, other methods that we have listed below. So long-acting nitrates, uh, you can also do... Uh, uh, nitro drip, beta blockers, aspirin, smoking cessation, uh, if you uh, treat with statins, and uh, folate is uh, a question mark because we're, we're not totally sure how effective it could be in uh, chronic prevention of angina. Angioplasty is uh, an important method. It is uh, historically associated with less risk than, than uh, coronary artery bypass graft, but the CABGs are getting pretty good, and, and so they're, they're not associated with as much risk as they used to be. So um, treatment of unstable angina, we have this, this table here uh, that's adapted from um, boards and wards. But, but basically, if you have a, a low risk, meaning that you're, you're probably not going to have um, any uh, recurrent unstable angina or um, an MI, then it, this is resting pain less than 20 minutes, usually relieved with nitroglycerin. You can give aspirin, uh, O2, beta blockers, uh, and sublingual nit nitroglycerin. So if you add uh, longer pain, um, it's uh, you can uh, nocturnal angina, T wave inversion, ST depression, then we're starting to call it intermediate risk. And you can add a longer acting nit nitroglycerin. You might consider using heparin. And then if, uh, if the ST depression is more pronounced, and if we have positive troponins or acute pulmonary edema, then we might want to add uh, a nitro drip or a GP2B, GP3A antagonist. And you're definitely going to want to do heparin. So if we if we do have a confirmed STEMI, if we get it within the first six hours, then we'll want to do uh, thrombolytics like TPA or strep streptokinase. If we're given TPA, we want to give give heparin as well. Angioplasty is uh, also a uh, preferred method of treating uh, ST elevation MI. Um, a coronary artery bypass graft isn't going to really help us in the acute setting, but it may be a good uh, long-term treatment to help us to prevent future MIs. And then you want to give them aspirin, definitely, and a beta blocker, definitely. Uh, statins, or they say to control... Uh, Control lipid levels is uh, an important treatment. Statins may have a, a separate effect on uh, inflammatory processes, and, and that might may be one of the reasons that they help to decrease mortality in these patients. But that those 
studies are still ongoing. Uh, oxygen and morphine, especially for pain. ACE inhibitors help uh, prevent remodeling, which uh, is good for heart muscle. And then, of course, these guys need to stop smoking. They should probably do some exercise. So, uh, as you send them out the door, make sure they're stopping smoking. Uh, if they get a stent, they need to be on clopidogrel for a year. Uh, aspirin, nitroglycerin, beta blocker statins we talked about. So, the, the purpose of this is not to uh, guide clinicians. Uh, not that I think any clinicians would be uh, using this as a guide, but... Uh, but of course you have up to date as a as a resource um and if you do have comments uh, for me please send kendrick at the uh we'd like to make these presentations better so they can be a good resource for medical students or anybody else who, who wants to learn uh, about medicine and so please uh Direct your comments to uh, Kendrick at themedschool.com or leave them on YouTube. And uh, help us know if there's important things that we left out or uh, inaccurate information. Thank you.